Welcome to our series of interviews, Know Your Candidates, conversations with the candidates for mayor in the city of Holyoke for this municipal election of 2021. I'm Johan Rashivega, and it's my pleasure to have this conversation today with Billy Glidden. And you are one of the seven candidates officially running for mayor for this election. Billy, thank you so much for this opportunity of talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a big fan of your work, as I've said. Yeah. So let us know a little bit about uh, who you are and what made you take this decision of saying, I want to run for mayor of the city of Holyoke. Who am I? That's deep. Um, I, was, uh, I was born in the city of Holyoke uh, to two parents with deep roots in the city. So I was born and raised here with, and I had a, a deep attachment to the city's uh, life and history. I was lucky to grow up in a household with my, my mom, my dad, and my maternal grandmother uh, who helped raise me. She was known as Ma Boyle. She had taught at Holyoke Catholic High School for about 36 years, and then she taught at the Halo Center, which was a program for adults who had left school to come back and get their GED. So I grew up in the house with, with her as well, a multi-generational household. And um, I feel very lucky to have had that experience. So then I, I grew up in Holyoke, played sports in Holyoke, uh, went away to college, ultimately, um, went to Williams College and uh, studied English and political science there. While at Williams, I did a, some work for the city as an intern in the mayor's office for the previous administration. I was involved in you know, quality of life issues, constituent services, some communications work, thinking through big picture issues of policy. And when I graduated from Williams, I, I came back and worked in the city for two more years in uh, an aid role, essentially, where I was doing many different things, uh, but, but getting a, a pretty substantial understanding, I think, of the issues that face the city, the ways that our politics are, the, the ways our politics work and don't work, and um, some of the structural uh, barriers that hinder the progress of the city broadly. And, and also I, I got a, a glimpse of things that work well and I saw, I got, I got to see the power of ordinary people in Holyoke to chart the course for the city. I, I was in the mayor's office when the organizing around Lyman Terrace was happening, for example, and that was a case of people in the community who self-identified as a community who fought to keep their homes and fought to shape a, a just and humane housing policy for the city, which is ultimately what happened. So I also saw Holyoke at its best. Uh, after the 2015 election in Holyoke and then, the, and then into early 2016, I, I, I was working in the city, but I was beginning to transition to other work. I moved to New York City where I was employed by Community Access, which is one of the oldest and largest housing and mental health nonprofits in New York City. It was founded in 1974, actually, in response to the um, mass release of psychiatric patients from uh, New York State Hospital. So it was founded in response to widespread homelessness among this population and was really a pioneer in developing housing models that got people off the streets, out of shelters, connected them to resources and wider uh, community networks to enable them to live freely and, and independently. And so I, I was really part of an organization that was on the front lines of a human rights issue in, in New York City. I was, I did communications work for them. I did some fundraising. I did advocacy. There were, there were a range of advocacy priorities that that agency had uh, from advocating for more funding to build more housing. There was advocacy around reforming the NYPD's response to mental health crisis calls. 
uh, calling for more crisis intervention training, calling for um, really diverting people from law enforcement responses altogether when, when one wasn't uh, merited. So a lot of very important issues that I, I was involved in. I felt very lucky to be part of that. I felt very lucky to get to know community access tenants, many of whom are still in touch with me today and following this campaign, people who lived through uh, unimaginable traumas and, and were able to rebuild their lives with a little help from the agency, but more importantly, more importantly with their own inner uh, resilience. And, and so um, I left New York City in the midst of COVID. I, was, I continued to do some work for community access remotely and then I had to think about how do I want to get involved in Holyoke, right? And obviously we're talking right now because I'm a candidate for mayor. And so what went into that decision was thinking about what are the issues the city is facing and what, could, what can I bring to bear? Uh, what, what uniquely could I contribute given the fact that it's a big field, given the fact that there are other candidates running whom I respect greatly and agree with on many things. So was there something that I could contribute that uh, could, could be beneficial to the city, could be useful? And, and really what I came to was I, I thought that my work around issues in New York and issues in Holyoke in, in the mayor's office uh, gave me an ability to work collaboratively with people. Uh, the fact that I'm not already an elected official in the city, I thought gave me an opportunity to find more common ground across the political divide in the city. I think so often in Holyoke, we end up fighting with each other along these sort of um, cultural, by like culture war lines, and we fail to see the ways that our interests overlap in many ways. And I thought, all right, if I can run a campaign that speaks to the best parts of people, uh, calls people out of themselves in pursuit of a higher purpose, and um, give, you know, gives people reason to feel good and hopeful, then it will have been time well spent. So, and and, and that, that intuition I had about the, about the kind of politics people in Holyoke were hungry for, that, that's been vindicated every step of the way with the response I've gotten. So, you know, win or lose, I, I feel like it's been time well spent. That was a pretty long answer. Anybody at home who's fallen asleep, I'm sorry. Actually, it's important to get to know all this background because yeah. this is the opportunity for people in the community to get to know who are the candidates, who, who they are in all possible aspects, including your personal history, your background. Yeah. And by listening to, to this, the experience of working for the city, mm -hmm. aiding a uh, former mayor, and also seeing the experiences in a larger community like the one in the uh, in New York City gives you some perspective and experiences that are important important aspects to to bring when you are now putting putting yourself in the in the position to become a mayor for the city of Holyoke. So without having to be redundant on what on what you already explained is more to think about what do you bring to the table based on all these experiences, your background, your personal experience, your knowledge, your education, mm -hmm. and these interactions in different aspects that now could become part of a role as mayor of the city of Holyoke should be elected? Sure. So my work in Holyoke and New York, I think, helped give me a sense of a, a big picture analysis of the problems confronting urban communities and how to address them in a strategic and humane way. So a big conversation that happened last night in the debate um, was about the, a distinction between management on the one hand and you know bigger picture vision on the other. And I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think that what I bring to the table is um, the, the right set of values and convictions and ability to work with people, an ability to 
uh, speak to people in a way that invites them in and, uh, instead of pushing them out and to build uh, a working coalition of support to get things done. Now, management is a piece of that. But you elect a mayor to you know, be the CEO of the city, as it were. And what the CEO is there to do of any organization is to see where we need to go, right? And see strategically, how do we get there? And I think if we don't consider the moral and ethical dimensions of the job, we're missing a big part of it, right? The work of government is to serve the well-being of the public, to accompany people in their, in their struggles and to make life easier for folks. The work of government is to uplift human dignity and to invest in the common good. And so if we're thinking about the role only in terms of uh, numbers, and not the human beings that are living here and that want to stay here and that want to prosper here, then we're missing a big part of what the role calls for and I think what this moment calls for. When we talk about becoming mayor for the city of Holyoke, we are looking forward to four years, a mm -hmm. four-year term. Mm -hmm. What do you think are your most important goals or achievements that you look to fulfill in this term as mayor of Holyoke should you be elected? Sure, so we need to grow our tax base by making the city uh, a place that is easier for you know, small businesses to start up and, and, to, and we need to make the process of navigating city hall and navigating permitting easier for folks but that that's not the end in itself that we, we want to attract business and, and grow the tax base so that the long-term prosperity of the city and our people and the long-term health of our city is served so a big priority for me in a four-year term would be to continue to create an ecosystem of investment where folks here and elsewhere see that this is the place to be, that, that uh, Holyoke is a place where you can thrive. And the way you do that is through smart development that doesn't uh, trade away our assets in return for some short-term profit that actually costs us more in the long run. There are examples I could mention that I talked about last night. I think the Lynch School is a great example of that. I think, um, conversations about you know privatizing whiting reservoir or, or, or putting a, a landfill in the quarry i think that those are all emblematic of that kind of school of thought so i would pursue development that serves our long-term health i would continue to try to get more housing in the pipeline fortunately we've seen uh, a range of housing options developed in holyoke we need more of that uh, people need nice places to live and when you have improved housing stock you also attract a, a stronger workforce so I, you make smart investments it's not it's not magic where you go and you and you um i'm going to go out into the world and find business people and and make a case to them about why they should come here that you can market our assets we have them but we can also make investments right here that make us even more attractive so that when we go out and make the case that we have something to offer and we're attracting industries that are uniquely tailored to the community so we're not bending over backwards saying please come save us come you know come be part of what's happening here and so that's a piece of it the, number two is when we're talking about i just said number two i don't know if that's actually the second thing i'm saying i've lost track actually um but when we're talking about growing the city, I think we also need to make sure that we are taking every, every step possible to make sure that people that are living here now aren't displaced. We can do that by developing more housing, that that's a way to, to do that. I think a, a key thing for the mayor in the next four years will be to get local control of the schools back, not as an end in itself, I mean, that's fundamentally a process question. What's really important is 
are the kids that are walking in the doors of the schools right now being well served. And ultimately, I think the teachers and the people of Holyoke are in the best position to chart a, a path forward for our schools. And I'd be committed to working with the new receiver, Anthony Soto, to finding a way back to, to local control. So those are just a few of the things that I would be laser focused on in a four year term. But this is all in pursuit again of, of a long term vision of where do we want to go? Can we be a densely populated, vibrant, prosperous, equitable, just community? And, and I believe that we can be. I believe that we can be a model to the rest of the Commonwealth and the, and the country of how a, a city like ours can come back. And I know because you mentioned to me that we're going to talk more about racial dynamics in the city. We can be an example of how a community that is diverse can, can cohere around uh, uh, common goals and purposes and uplift a, a common humanity. So you talk about education and also to make sure that there is a stable tax base that could help mm -hmm. the city to, to continue to continue evolving and, and grow. Mm -hmm. Of course, being the mayor of a city entails a lot of work and taking care of so many different things happening at the same time. Some of them with more urgency than others, but none of them uh, being more important than others whatsoever. Everything needs to, to mm -hmm. have a balance. So what do you think are right now for the city of Holyoke some of the most important things to take care of as issues that need to be addressed or things that are working that need to continue evolving or things that are not yet here that could benefit? the community by being implemented. Anything that, that do, do, ident do you identify as priorities for the city right now? Well, sure. So, I mean, right now, the, I mean, the next mayor will have decisions to make about the budget. The next mayor will have decisions to make about the way we spend this ARPA money, this, this once in a generation infusion of federal money that, that can be used in if we if we spend that wisely, I think it can have a transformative effect on particularly neighborhoods that uh, can feel overlooked or neglected. And, and so it should be a priority right away to, to make the upgrades that are necessary and also use that money to serve uh, deeper structural questions of equity. So if, if we can use some of that money to make sure that we're taking care of environmental questions like updating uh, HVAC systems and, and making sure that folks are breathing clean air. I mean, this is these are investments that we can make and that's a, a very pressing need right now. We're making our way through this pandemic and we need to be making investments that reflect our care for our neighbors as we as we build an environmentally just future as, as we come through this. Uh, public safety, and when I'm out knocking on doors, that's something I hear about a lot, uh, especially in certain neighborhoods. People uh, just want to feel like they, that their kid can go outside and play and they don't have to worry about it. I think that's, that's clearly something that the, the city will have to come up with a strategy around. Uh, I'd be a proponent of you know, working with the police department to continue to build trusting relationships with the community because that's really the only way forward and, and you know oftentimes the, the thing I hear is that is folks just want to feel like the that, that the law enforcement response that we have is um, is responsive and 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 adequate to to the task you know so um, yeah you asked things that we need to address right now. I, th I think I, I'm speaking, I've been speaking to a number of those things already, but, but right walking in the door, it's the budget and it's the ARPA money. And this brings us to the core of what your campaign is. What are the values of your campaign? What do you stand for? And how can people get to know more about your campaign and your plans, especially because we are approaching the preliminary election on September 21st. So this is the last question? Is this the finale? We are approaching. 
because <laughs> I could keep going. This has been fun uh, to, to think about these important things, you know. Um, so you can learn more about me at glidenformare.com. And I'd encourage you to look up any of the forums and debates that have already happened. There was an environmental forum that I participated in. That was my first time doing a political debate as a candidate. So if I seem nervous, it's because I was. Uh, and then I, I participated in the City Democratic Committee forum. And then I participated in a community conversation that, that uh, JR moderated at the Hiberitos Club, which was a lot of fun too. So I would, I would check all of those out to hear from me and everybody else. And then last night we had the taxpayers and chamber debate at the high school. And I had plenty to say there, so you can check that out. It, or, or you could email me too on my website, reach out. I'm happy to talk to anybody. Is there any message that you have for, of course, the public in Holyoke, but even thinking about maybe your, your uh, fellow uh, opponents in the mayoral race about uh, what to expect in this election, possibly one of the most interesting in these recent years, especially because we have so many candidates yep. running for, and, and, and I see it as a positive thing to yeah, I do too. To be in. I do too. So do I have a message for the voters and, and my fellow candidates about what I think will happen or what I what to expect? Anything that comes to your mind. All right. Hmm. I want you to vote. <laughs> um, I expect that people will vote. I expect that, uh, you know, we haven't engaged and passionate citizenry here in Holyoke. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Um, I'm very grateful to have gotten the chance to do this. Like, I don't know who, like, who gets to run for mayor of their hometown. Like, I look at my life sometimes and I'm just, all right, like this, this is, uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to, to be part of this. And, and, you know, to my, Fellow candidates, it's been uh, a lot of fun to, to be doing this with you. And I expect that no matter what happens, I, I expect and I hope that we will find ways to work together and to let each other's worldviews inform each other as we, as we uh, move forward as a city. This is our conversation with Willie Glidden. In the ballot, you are going to see it as William Glidden, just so you, you don't get confused. <laughs> and we are talking to all the candidates in this mayoral race for the municipal election of 2021 in the city of Holyoke, Massachusetts. This is uh, an opportunity to get to know individually the candidates so you can have a better idea of who they are what do they stand for? And to have a better way to decide for yourself, who are you gonna vote for? So, um, Billy, thank you so much for this opportunity of getting to talk to you, getting to know more about your whole uh, perspective on why are you running for mayor and also to thank you for, for doing it. So, is there any last remarks you would like to make? I just wanna thank you for, for uh, what you're doing for the democratic process in the city. It's very good to talk to you, and your, and your questions are, are on point. Very important, so thanks for asking them. Thank you so much, Billy. Really. So this is our series of conversations with the candidates, and remember, the preliminary election is September 21st. Thank you again, Billy. I'm Jorgen Rochivega. You're watching Holyoke Media. <laughs>